All right, it's time for another episode of Cracked, because I still have a big cabinet full of broken records. And let's see what Nipper's got for us today. Oh, yep, he's off to the side again. All right. So, so far we've looked at hairline cracks and an edge chip, and we've looked at a couple records that aren't particularly valuable. Well, today we're going to go a little higher in uh, rarity here. I can get the light to not glare off of it. As you can say, see, this is a mid-8500 uh, OK Electric 8000 series, one of the race series of records. Um, this one's a Sermon. you see me put a couple of those up before. And as you can see, this one's got a particularly bad lamb crack. Now, what is a lamination crack exactly? Well, for certain types of records, for certain manufacturers, uh, namely OK and um, Columbia, um, the manufacturing process for discs in the 20s and 30s and, and even beyond the, the, the label um, was to uh, create sort of a laminated disc, whereas um, you know, for for most record companies, the record is just made out of a, a single sheet of uh, shellac or whatever material they're using. Um, in the case of a an OK or a Columbia, uh, there's actually a, a sheet of shellac on the top, a sheet of shellac on the bottom, and then another medium somewhere in the middle that was, you know, put in there as the record was pressed. This was to save on the rather expensive shellac material. It also meant they could use a slightly higher quality shellac um, that would be tougher and withstand wear better and also um, transfer the, the music quality better um, for the actual playing surface. Now this is opposed to Victor, uh, for example, that had um, a solid disc and they had to use a slightly lower quality shellac because the whole thing was just you know one piece of the, the same type of material and so to compete price-wise with OK and Columbia, they had to uh, just just use a lower lower quality shellac just because they were using more material. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So really the best way to explain what a laminated disc looks like and the advantages of it is off an old Columbia record sleeve. So this is from uh, anywhere in the late 30s to the uh, 50s where you've got these red label Columbias. Pretty common sleeve. And here um, they kind of show how that works, where you got your record playing surface uh, on both sides, so it's the final product, but then inside of it you've got shellac on the top, shellac on the bottom, and as they say, uh, you know, coarse material isolated in the center uh, with quality materials from the playing surface. Did it make a difference? Um, actually, yes. Uh, most Columbia's and uh, OK uh, records uh, were actually more than okay. They were they're pretty good, and uh, assuming they haven't been beat up with you know steel needles or or whatever, and not, you know not the steel needles are necessarily bad, but worn steel needles are really bad. Um, most of them actually tend to play clearer, and the uh, the tone quality carries through a little better than you know say a uh, Victor pressing that was uh, <laughs> pressed too hot and has the little bubbles on it. We'll talk about that on another time. Anyway, back to the record at hand. So this is a copy of uh, OK8547 uh, by Reverend J.M. Gates and Congregation. <laughs> size Hell is God in God's Jailhouse, uh, hence the title of this video. And so, um, yeah, this, this crack is pretty serious. We've got what would have been, this, this record probably would have been broken in half if it weren't laminated. But as it stands, we've got, you can see the, the cardboard material in the middle there. You see a part of the surface uh, material is flecked away, so there's some missing grooves. And then all the way down here we got a crack, and we got little chips and whatnot. So this is actually pretty wide cracks. And actually most lamb cracks, so lamination cracks, only go through to one side of the record. This one carries over to the other side. So maybe we'll deal with that one on another day. Uh, but I'm going to experiment here a little bit to try to figure out how we can get that sealed up so this record's playable again because at this point I wouldn't dare play this because every time the needle went across this way it have a good chance of picking up another little chunk of shellac there and, and making the record even less and less playable 
uh, more likely to skip and then also damaging the needle. So let's get to it. Okay, so got a paper towel underneath it, although that doesn't matter quite so much because again there's a solid material in the middle of it. Got my record, got a second paper towel for dousing, for uh, spreading, and I've got our good old friend Mr. Super Glue can. So let's try this and see how it works. I try not, don't want to get too much glue in here because you know, from past experience, that hasn't ended well, and we've had to, uh, you know, get everything pulled up afterwards. But at the same time, oh, and I'm off the crack already. This stuff actually washes up if you get it right away. So how about we get a damp paper towel. Which is a little dangerous because you don't want to get the cardboard wet, obviously. Let's dry that off. Scrape some of that chunk out. Get all, get all that out of there. But the upside of that is now we have a little bit of a surface to play with because the glue tends to stick to itself pretty good. Alright, let's try again. I was reading the instructions recently. This thing says you need one drop per square inch of material you're trying to join. So uh, <laughs> the uh, total size of the material we're trying to join here is you know, less than a square inch. And we're using a little more than a drop there. So Let's just let that sit for a little bit, and uh, maybe we'll get something good to come out of this. Okay, so we've let that sit for a couple minutes there. I'm actually going to use the moist side. Let's see if we can't scrape off any excess without shoving it into the grooves. It definitely looks like we've done something whether that's what we want to have done or not. And I can still feel a groove there. Let's start scraping away a little. I know this isn't the prettiest, but it should work. All right, we've scraped that up quite a bit. Um, most of the glue is gone off of there. And so now, even though it still looks like there's a bit of a chunk missing there, might skip some grooves, we're going to go ahead and try to play test this one. Here we go. 
doing these videos, I'm probably going to have to buy a new needle soon. Alright, let's see what happens. Oh, speed. played through. Maybe not the prettiest playthrough, and it certainly doesn't look pretty, but I think a lot of that ticking noise was actually from the glue and the groove, so if I spend some more time cleaning that out, it might sound a little better. We'll see. And there you have it. An old copy of a laminated OK with a ginormous lamb crack, and we got one side of it fixed, and I'm not entirely satisfied with the result. I mean, it plays, and I don't think I caused any damage to either the needle or the um, the record itself. I didn't see any chunks flying off, but I think we can do better. And so I think at some point in the future, um, you might try a slightly different method for repairing the lamb crack on the other side, um, patching it in, filling it in, and seeing if we can get a, a better quality sound out of that. But until then, I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Um, like and subscribe if you liked and want to subscribe and see some of the other videos I've made and new videos I'm going to be making. And uh, hopefully you found this both educational and entertaining, at least to some degree. And uh, yeah, talk to you again soon. Bye for now.